Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go into the full figure sculpt. Okay, so he, we have our guy posed and uh, he's ready to go. Now we just need to get into the serious business of refining this, which is going to take us uh, quite a bit of time, and you'll see that it's, it's involved. I mean, it's almost like piecing together uh, the full figure sculpts that we've done for the first uh, five, or the, sorry, the fragments that we've done for the first five weeks and put them together into something that requires even more attention, uh, which is balance and pose and articulation of the joints in relation to each other, and really fine-tuning all those things collectively um, is a big task. So it's going to take us uh, quite a bit of time. And so let's just get into this. First thing that you'll notice that I've done is, uh, looking back through here, I've done what we've done with the hand exercise and that we've subdivided um, I've subdivided this a couple times without any smoothing going on and you can see that he's actually at level three right now and he's still really sharp uh, which means all those polygons are internal and unsmooth right so I have um, quite a few in there and then after four I've turned on a little smooth just to uh, give a little bit softer edges. Not a big deal, really. You can go either way, but um, I've smoothed it. You could actually go smooth the whole thing if you want, but again, I'm doing this primarily for the angles in the hands, and also it's it's kind of a good way to keep track of what you've worked through, what ha what you haven't worked through. Um, you know, part of our job is going to be to refine, say, the arm, and you go and you smooth off planes of the sharp edges, and you just kind of proceed uh, logically. And areas that you haven't finished are quite noticeable, um, at least for a first pass. Okay, so here we go, and really, uh, this is back at level one. This is corrections to the posing that we had done um, last week and uh, really there's just a few kind of kinks and things in the mesh that I need to work out. Uh, but right now I'm polygrouping my stuff, right? So I have easy selection sets for uh, arm, head, other arm, torso, and the legs, and you'll see me proceed through that. Okay, not a big deal. It just makes things easy. You can subdivide it however you want into different polygroups. You know, you might try to cut off the hands. I will at a later date as soon as I start working into the hands. Um, so now really that uh, we're subdivided and I've kind of fixed some of the major kinks, um, we're just going to start blocking in form, right? So this is, uh, these are the things that we've seen in previous weeks. Um, and so I think our, our fragments prepared us pretty well for uh, what's going on. And we just have to put it all together now. Okay, so we're looking at things like angle of the, the scapula on the back here uh, for the scapula humor rhythm on the raised arm. And so just be very certain to cross-reference this against your uh, the images provided of the model in pose. Uh, there's just a lot of time lapse to go through, so I probably won't cover every tedious detail, but uh, you guys will get the, the gist of it um, as we go through. And that's things like keeping the joints straight, you know, like that's what I was doing right here, was just making sure the arm was straight, blocking in the, the abdomen like we've seen in the first week. So obliques. And this really is what I call a first pass. You know, I'm really just doing my best to, to kind of observe the reference and get some a starting point, get lines in the right place, uh, correct things that I noticed that are grossly broken. Um, Things like this elbow gotten going really round from the uh, the Z sphere rig. Uh, just going to pop that back out and give it the point that it deserves. Likewise, over here, I'll adjust the condyles. I'll adjust some things in here. You know, just hit the major points with your first pass, and that's what I'm going to do for this. I'm going to take the first pass all the way through. Um, going to leave off the hands. And we'll actually do a little bit of portrait on the face just to block something in, uh, but we'll get into more detail that uh, of the portrait uh, subsequently. Okay, so really, this is it. Just blocking in the, the muscle groups that we know are going to be in the area. We'll refine volumes and, uh, and the actual fine-tuning of the shape a little bit later. But this is it. Just put them in. Uh, everything that we kind of know 
Again, adjusting the condyles, um, roughly using the texture map as a guide, what we've, what I've painted uh, in here, but the condyles are obviously going crazy with stretching. So I'm probably going to disregard those at some point. They've gotten us to the right place, and, uh, and I'll probably uh, just stop using them shortly. And you'll, see, you'll see me turn it off uh, in a little while. I am using it for other parts of the body, though, like the scapula and the acromion. Okay, uh, on this side, just really st trying to get the armpit defined in the back, right? So Terra's Major going across and then Latissimus Dorsi creating a lot of volume in here. Right, so we just want to be sure that we start to block this in. Uh, and again, remember that when we're looking at the reference, we have to make decisions on what is tensed and what is relaxed. And actually, because this is not the images that we have, all eight images, are not uh, snapshot, uh, simultaneous snapshots of a pose. Um, this guy has kind of tweaked himself slightly over time as he's been spun around on the turntable. So just know when you're looking at comparing different images, um, the same area and different images, that you have to really take that into account, that it's not a perfect exact match. So you have to make a, a judgment call at a certain point as to what you're going to focus on and use and what you're going to throw away. And it can be an aesthetic thing. Um, choose the one that looks the best to you. Um, or it can be the one, you choose the one that has the most information in it, you know, that, that you're able to read best. Okay, um, blo again, blocking these things in. Some of this, these areas I'm going to come back to and a little bit later on when I see that they need refinement. Like these, are, I've, I've actually sketched these in and they're a little bit short. They're going to have to come out a little bit further uh, when I start to, to look more closely, closely at this area. But um, for now, just getting an outline of their shape in the serratus anterior will give me the ability to actually kind of adjudicate their position later on. Um, because without them, you know, you're kind of just guessing. So at least if something is outlined, you have something to guess relative to. Okay, and I'm, I'm proceeding fairly systematically through this one, um, not, trying not to jump around too much for you guys, um, working from the, uh, the torso down to the legs, and uh, then hopefully down to the feet. Just do a block on the feet and then out to the arms. Okay, this is all stuff, again, that we're relatively familiar with. Uh, through our studies, locking in the, the, the tibia and trying to get some of the mass coming through here, setting, you've seen me set up the sartorius uh, coming down the leg, so we have adductors in here and we have the hamstring groups back here and, and we have vastus medialis in here, okay, and sartorius coming right down the middle. And a few people have mentioned that uh, this guy looks like he has short legs. And in fact, his legs aren't really short compared to his body. Um, they're actually pretty much the right side, uh, right size. If you look at the measurement sheet, um, it's a bit of an aside as I sculpt through this leg, uh, the midpoint of his body, the pubic symphysis, is about exactly half of his height. And so that means that his body is, is kind of well divided between top and bottom. Um, so it's not uh, hugely short in the legs. Okay, so just to, to keep everything clear in people's mind as I work through this, I'm blocking in the gastrocnemius and the soleus right now. So really just outlining this, uh, the, two, the two heads. And so gastrocnemius, two heads, and then the soleus coming down here into a common tendon to, uh, well, the Achilles tendon down here and into the heel, which is called the calcaneus bone. Okay, so if we look here, this is the head of the, the fibula, tendon of the biceps femoris coming down. Um, remember the important thing with calf muscles is they always interchange and interlock up to the upper leg, right? They grab onto the back of the condyles of the femur, right? So that's an, imp an important thing that we're starting to get bring these up here. And in fact, 
I probably brought them a little too high and I lower this uh, a little bit uh, later. But hey, um, again, you get it, get it in and then refine it. Okay, now down around the ankle, we have almost following exactly what we've drawn in our in our texture map, um, the medial and, and lateral uh, malleoli, and just kind of popping down there, and this is the distal end of the fibula, uh, which is the lateral malleoli, and I think I'm going to start blocking in the foot now. We haven't talked about the foot explicitly in any of our examples, um, in any of our fragments, uh, but I should probably do a, a little bit of a lecture later on in the course on it. Um, but we have essentially kind of, uh, well, we get to it when we when we start to block it in a little bit more. Hamstring groups going in, getting the semimembranosus, semitendinosus. Uh, tendons and bodies coming down here on the inside and again sartorius and adductor and uh, tendons coming down here. So right now I have quite distinct uh, separation between the adductors and the hamstring group. This will eventually get uh, glossed over as well. It's more just kind of trying to establish the volumes uh, at this point. doing roughly what I'm observing in the reference in the, the gluteal area. And then kind of also very important in this pose, leg is projecting backwards, quite tensed here. And when you're projecting the leg backwards, this lower section of the gluteus maximus, the part that's coming back and grabbing onto the, the femur and the iliotibial band, uh, it's quite tense through here, right? So you get volume through here. But the other important aspect of this particular pose is, is the volume of the vastus lateralis, how it comes up and uh, just bulges out. You can see the, the, the top end of the muscle as it sits kind of underneath the uh, greater trochanter right there. Okay, uh, I've, <laughs> I've summarily discarded the texture map now um, because it's starting to confuse me and because it's quite, uh, quite blocky and I think it's time to just stand on our own two feet, uh, no pun intended. So blocking this in, fat pads, and just again kind of constructing what we know as, as the common tendon, right? Up, up, and little a little grab for the rectus femoris and then down at a 45 degree-ish angle for the vastus lateralis. All right, and then obviously patella. This is all should be review for you now, right? So this is literally just doing what we've already practiced and studied. Ah, bless it to foot. Here we go. Now, uh, you guys are given a couple advantages using this base mesh because the feet actually have most of the the proportions and the, the large shapes in it, right? So the things that you're going to have to refine is just going to have to be the, the shape of the toes, obviously. Th those aren't going to really pass um, for the final sculpt. And then you're also going to have to contour off the edges uh, of these things and get just some of the, the smaller forms in here, like... Uh, this is one of the uh, adductors of the big toe that comes in right along the arch. And then you have kind of big fat heel pad comes off in here. Um, it's going to be uh, quite a bit of, of observation for you, but most of the forms are in here already. So just watch as I block this stuff in. Um, there's the, uh, the adductor muscle. There's kind of the head of what ends up being the first metatarsal. Just like we have in our hands, we have uh, metatar metacarpals in our hands, we have metatarsals in our feet. This is the big one that comes down to the big toe. Okay, and then pretty much you're just looking at, uh, you're looking at a block of tarsal bones, like we have carpals in the wrist, you have a block of tarsals, and then 
metatarsals coming off. This last uh, metatarsal out here is magic. This is the fifth metatarsal uh, for the pinky toe. And it has a really important landmark on the outside called the, uh, well, the head of the fifth metatarsal, actually. And you'll see me block this in right here coming up. And essentially, it just kind of sets up the right shape on the side of the outside of the foot. You'll have kind of a tube-shaped mass here from the outside of the, the pinky toe to the head of the fifth metatarsal. And again, this is this is something that actually pulls the pinky toe out like this, an, abduct, uh, an abductor of the pinky toe. Uh, I hope I said abductor on the, uh, the big toe because it's an abductor, it's not an adductor. Okay, um, so uh, abductor and then uh, it attaches there. So you see me mark this landmark coming up. Spam, just like so. And the bottom is is almost fun, right? So when you're doing the bottom of the foot, this is where you kind of make sure that your arch, the arch of the foot that you're you're constructing, is functional like we know it's functional, right? So pretty much the the arch of the foot bears the the, the load of the body, and it's quite resilient with ligaments and and tendons going underneath it, um, but what I want you guys to just do is I want you guys to really make uh, your footprint on the bottom, right? Everybody knows what a footprint looks like. Uh, if not, get your foot wet and walk out on the pavement and just have a, a quick look at it. This is pretty much what it is, right? You have all the, uh, the fat pads underneath the toes, the, the metatarsals, and then the actual digits themselves and heel and outside here this is where the kind of the the vault of the foot rests on the ground right out on where the fifth metatarsal goes along right so that's that's all this and that means this is all off the ground and you should see some space under it all right if your foot is standing on the ground you'll see space coming in from the medial aspect or the medial view okay uh as we go up here i'm looking at the width of the Achilles tendon. I'm looking at how much depression there is behind it, right? Because this is actually very empty space back here. Um, side to side, you could, if there wasn't skin there, you could stick your finger one side through the other and not really hit anything important. Literally, it's just a big gap to give uh, uh, a mechanical kind of lever for the Achilles tendon to pull on. So look carefully at the uh, the reference for for that stuff. Okay, uh, here we go into the other leg. Uh, where will I start? There's a good chance I'll turn my texture map on and block in the patella to start with. Uh, I'm just guessing. We'll see. Yep, there goes the texture map. Sartorius and patella. Okay, good guess. I uh, say so that's. I give myself points for getting it right. Um, slightly cheating because I did do this, but I don't remember. Okay, uh, all the muscle groups going in. Bam. Um, vastus medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis is going to be out here. Uh, this is all going to have to be fine-tuned, but I'm just uh, sketching right now. The adductors, and again, just what we saw on the other leg. Uh, the uh, tibial plateau. See the is actually the shape of the gluteal muscles coming out here. This is where we're going to see the kind of the limit of their body, and this is actually the beautiful interchange with what ends up being the the big volume of the vastus lateralis right in here, right. So this kind of shoots underneath, and this rests over top. Uh, over the femur, and sitting under the greater trochanter, and hamstring group right here. And going back to the reference, if you're if you have it in front of you somewhere, 
there's a lot of uh, really interesting forms happening on the side of the leg due uh, primarily to the iliotibial band and the, the fascia lata having all sorts of tension in it. Um, one of them is a nice little kind of uh, unique thing in here, kind of a, a little depression. And the next one is uh, a line down here. All right, it looks like the iliotibial band is nice and tight down through here. And this is passing almost directly like this. So almost creating a lashing effect here. And who knows, maybe the, this top one is, is tensor fascia latte pulling on it or some other type of uh, relief being created. Be careful with this this one. It's, uh, it's it would be easy to overmodel, and I'm sure I'll see some people who've done that. Despite this warning, little head of the uh, the medial condyle of the femur, just a little bit. You can see it a tiny bit in the uh, in the images, and that's exactly where it would sit. It's a little bit overdone right now, but I'll take it in at a later date. This little thickness that I'm putting here to the, uh, the la uh, lateral side of the common tendon, this is vastus intermedius coming out underneath. Our vastus intermedius is just the, uh, uh, the fourth quadricep muscle that sits on the femur. And really, <laughs> it only pokes its head out down here. Other than that, it's covered by the other three heads. Right, and I'm actually uh, I'm putting that in, but uh, I'm going to have to take off some of the volume a little bit later. And that's what I was talking about. The this is the iliotibial band coming through here. Remember this. This is just it's a crazy form. You know, it's, it, this iliotibial band is being grabbed onto by the gluteal muscles. It's being grabbed onto by the uh, tensor fascia latte up here. It's kind of going everywhere around the leg. It's just thick in this particular area. Okay, and it's going to create this form coming down through here to the tibia. And then you're also going to have this form of the tendon of the biceps femoris. So crazy stuff in there that, that actually requires quite a bit of attention and a little bit of, uh, in knowledge of what's going on in there, which is why I'm trying to explain this to you. <coughs> Again, look at that interlock hamstring muscles split, divide, and up the middle goes the gastric nemus, the, the calf muscle. There goes the, ca uh, the gastric nemus, the two heads. It's a little bit like the doing the other leg, and uh, there you go. Yeah twice the practice because we're sculpting this twice and it's in a slightly different pose. This one is more weight bearing. The other one is more extended. Uh, so try to notice those differences. And again, just use, use your knowledge of anatomy to, to help you put the things in place as we get through here. Um, the lateral uh, surface of the, the tibia, right? Peroneus longus coming down here. Or for those of you who prefer, fibularis longus, uh, same thing. Uh, and brevis is sitting underneath it down here. Uh, next up in line, we actually have small sliver coming down, extensor digitorum longus for the toes. But we don't see it really because we have this big body of uh, tibialis anterior sitting right here, creating the big form in the front. Okay, so really be primarily concerned about tibialis anterior and the peroneal muscles. And then obviously gastrocnemius and soleus in the back. And that's tibialis anterior that I'm blocking in right there. For anybody who has their anatomy books open on the toes, um, extensor digitorum brevis, that beautiful little squishy thing on the uh, lateral side of your foot. Extend your toes. So you can see I've just blocked in the the uh, abductor for the for the fifth meta uh, well the fifth toe, but right along the uh, the fifth metatarsal. 
And what I've kind of blocked in here, this is pretty much uh, the first metatarsal, right? So weight bearing end right here, and this is what interlocks with your your digits, so your phalanges, just like we have in the fingers. And then we're going to pass the abductor back. Like that. And so that's it. I mean, that's the forms of the foot explained. Uh, abductor mass and then the fat pad of the heel uh, squishing out right here. Right, two kind of inter they interlock right here. This one kind of shoots underneath, and this one goes over top, sits under uh, the medial malleolus and uh, tarsal block in here, and metatarsal coming down like this. Job done. Not really. It's not as easy as that, uh, but it's pretty well uh, set up with the forms that you have in the base mesh. Behind the medial uh, malleolus, you have this uh, depression back here, uh, which is pretty much empty space. It's just what I showed on the other foot. You stick your finger through there if there wasn't skin. Okay, uh, moving up the leg again, doing this nice interchange on the uh, the medial view of the leg, which is gastrocnemius and soleus, and then this kind of superficial part of the tibia. You know, this is what you would call the shin. And if I just step back, you can appreciate it a little bit more from this view, right? double interchange and there's a little flexor coming in there but we don't really see that uh, distinctly yikes it's almost like a replay of what we've already seen I am going to stay away from the toes for a little while just like I'm going to stay away from the pose of the hands uh, because both of them take a concerted effort just getting those little digits of the toes to to align correctly and do the right thing. You just have to, I have to sit down and focus anyways. And it takes a bit of my uh, concentration. As opposed to this other stuff, which requires no kind of, I'm joking, it requires a bit of concentration as well. Okay. Uh, there is our uh, medial epicondyle, right? And so we're looking at uh, kind of this this border going up between flexors, biceps, brachialis in here, and the triceps, right? Medial head of the triceps, long head of the triceps. Those are going back, long head going to the scapula. And cutting in front, uh, we have, of course, the teres major and the latissimus dorsi coming from back there. And that's where we're headed with this arm. These are all things that you guys should be able to observe on your um, on the reference, right? So I'm not going to say too much about it uh, unless there's something uh, specifically interesting or specifically horrible, <laughs> as in this case, right? Um, if you quick look at your reference, we'll show you that that's not really what's going on in that area. Um, uh, visually, this is still quite constructional with the rear head of the deltoid um, coming across, short head, lateral head of the, the triceps sitting out here, long head going in like this without any particular volume yet, and Terra's major going underneath. In reality, when you get this much kind of uh, kind of flexion back in the in the shoulder, all this is going to go flush and quite uh, quite compressed, right? So all those forms are going to merge, and I'll eventually get there. But for those of you at home following along, looking at your images, you're like Jesus. He's really uh, way out of the ballpark with that one. It'll it'll get there eventually. Okay, uh, front view of the forearm. You see me here just massing in 
uh, ridge muscles, right? Brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus. Um, remembering where these guys go, uh, brachioradialis is obviously going to the end of the radius, extensor carpi radialis longus is coming down to the base of this, uh, the second metacarpal on, so the, the index finger at the bottom. So just keep those in, in mind, those insertion points, and that will help you route uh, these bodies. So there we go. And you just see I'm going to try to divide the flexors and the, uh, and the ridge muscles on the front. Okay, uh, I don't know how much of this is still a mystery to people. Uh, forearms just take a bit of bit of concerted effort to, to get under control, but uh, ridge muscles. You have a nice little sliver of this guy, which is extensor carpi radialis brevis, coming out from under radialis longus right here. Brachioradialis is coming from up here further, down like that. Then we're going to have, in all probability, unless this guy has a serious mutation, which I don't think he does, we're going to have extensor digitorum right there. And then next to that, we're going to have extensor digiti minimi. And in all likelihood, again, next to that, we'll have extensor carpial naris coming down to the ulnar furrow, going out to over the styloid process of the ulna. Finally, for everybody who uh, loves this little guy, like I do, <laughs> the Anconius sitting out on the side, coming right down to the bone of the uh, ulna, which is called the olecranon, right there. Okay, so that's going to be coming in, I think. Well, olecranon, Anconius, ulnar furrow, remember that nice little break in the ulnar furrow? Nice little bend right here. Nice little slot for the Anconius to go in. Flirting with doing a bit of the hand, but uh, you'll see I don't. I don't engage. So that was the brachialis on the outside. Sensor carpial naris just went in. That tricep is going to need kind of continual refinement as I kind of notice that a little more twisting is needed in the in the arm to, to get it into the, the perfect pose and, and a few other things. So uh, that tricep will vex me for a little while to come. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of refining what this actually looks like because um, it's not perfectly clear in the, the reference because it's shadow, but uh, in this kind of pose of the of the arm, the the ulnar furrow doesn't protrude like like that. He's kind of has the muscles coming flush on either side, and the ulnar furrow is just a what it says a furrow. It's not a big uh, elevation like I've uh, drawn it in. So I'm just kind of bringing those two muscle bodies, the extensor and the flexor carpial naris, flush. Thenar and the hypothenar mass. Here, that's again. Yeah, Scott, are you gonna do the hand? Mm, unlikely, unlikely. Okay, so that's uh, we've just rewound. We've just gone past our our limit. Um, so here we are at the end. Notice end down here. End. Um, little slider is at the end. So uh, that's gonna be it for for where we've gotten to right now. We're, we're gonna continue in the next. Uh, little time-lapse segment and I'll walk through kind of the continuing refinement uh, and you'll see uh, some faces the next to come uh, so get ready for that I'll talk through kind of blocking in the start of the face this is not going to be the full-blown portraiture but this is just going to be you know touching on it okay I'll see you in a, in a couple minutes